there are a couple of things to check for before you install drywall. Small metal plates should go over any wires or pipes that are within one and a quarter inches of the edge of a stud. This protects the wires and pipes in the walls from the screws and nails you'll use to install the drywall. You also need to make sure you've got something to nail the drywall into along all the edges. Non-load bearing walls, like you'll put up in basements, are often trouble spots for nailers. So are vaulted and trade ceilings. And finally, be sure to check on whether or not you need a permit and inspections from your local building department. And generally, you start hanging drywall, or rocking as some people call it, on the ceiling, running the sheets perpendicular to the joists or trusses. Now, I started measuring from the exterior wall to this truss. Then we'll cut the sheet so the ends fall on the center of the bottom of the truss. Now also, before you rock, you want to make sure to mark the location of the trusses or joists on the top of the wall. And when the rock is up, you're going to need to know where to nail, and this will help. Okay. A special tool called a drywall T-square helps you cut pieces to the right length. Once I've marked the dimension along the top edge of the sheet, I set the T-square on the mark and run my utility knife down along the side. I'm not trying to cut through the piece, just score it. And it usually helps to hold the bottom of the T-square in place with your foot. Once I've scored it, give it a good firm snap. It should break apart right at the cut. Then I cut through the paper on the back and give it one last snap to separate it. Attaching drywall to the ceiling is probably the most awkward part of a drywall project. A 4 by 8 sheet of 5 8 inch drywall weighs 58 pounds. So we almost always rent a drywall lift. Now these go for about $30 per day or $90 per week. You set the cut sheet on it, level it out, and start cranking it up. Now just before it hits the ceiling, you stop cranking and wheel it into place. Finally, you raise it the rest of the way and adjust its position. When it's perfect, you snug it up to the ceiling and start to attach the sheet to the framing. Okay, that looks good. Now, to nail up drywall, you use a special type of hammer. It has a rounded face on it so that it actually countersinks the nail slightly into the drywall without tearing the paper. By countersinking the nail, we'll be able to cover the nail head with drywall mud and get a perfectly smooth surface. And these are special drywall nails. They have ring shanks, which are supposed to hold a little better. Standard length is one and a quarter inches for half inch drywall, and one and three eighths for five eighths inch drywall. For the time being, we're putting one nail in at the edge in each place where the edge crosses a truss. We're also putting nails in every eight inches or so along the short sides where the edges run parallel to the trusses. When you're nailing along the edges of a piece of drywall, make sure that the nail is at least three eighths of an inch back from the edge. Any closer and you might damage the edge. Now eventually, we're able to move the drywall lift out of the way which makes it a little easier to finish nailing. Now once you fasten the edges, you need to secure the middle of the sheets. One way is to use pairs of nails about two inches apart with each pair about a foot apart along each joist or truss. A better way than nailing is to use drywall screws and a screw gun. Now, screwing is faster and stronger, so with screws you need fewer fasteners. You should use one screw every 12 inches instead of two nails. The screw gun should be set to sink the screws just a little below the surface of the drywall without tearing or ripping the paper. As you cut your sheets, bear in mind that the joints between the pieces of drywall should be snug. But you may find that where two cut ends meet, there will be small gaps. These are okay. Well, we're ready to put up our first piece in the second row. Now one thing we don't want to do is have our seams line up down here, so we're not going to put in an 8 foot sheet. Actually, I'm just going to go out to this floor joist right here, about 46 inches. And then once we get this piece in, we'll lay in an 8-foot piece next to that and then polish off the rest of the row. We'll be right back. Four and an eight. For this piece, we need to cut some holes for recessed lights. First, measure carefully to locate the center of the light. 30 up from the bottom. Transfer the location of the sheet. Keep track of what edge you're measuring from 
and be aware of whether you're marking from the bottom or the top surface of the sheet. It's easy to make mistakes doing this. Use a compass to draw a circle on the sheet that's slightly larger than the recessed light. Then use a keyhole saw to cut it out. A keyhole saw is very stiff and you can just punch it through the sheet to get started. To make cuts along the length of a piece of drywall, use a tape measure to guide your knife while you score the sheet. Try to keep your movement parallel to the edge, but don't worry okay. if the cut ends up a little ragged. Yep. This type of cut generally will be okay. hidden in a corner. One, two, three. Okay. Now, not every piece is going to fit perfectly when you put it up. To make small adjustments, use an open screen rasp to take a little bit more off. Oh yeah, much better. Now one thing that's very important while you're hanging drywall that we haven't talked about yet, and that is you want to hang the, the long sides of the sheets together whenever possible. And that's because the long side of the sheet has this little tapered edge. When you put those two together, it forms a recess that makes it very easy to apply your tape and joint compound in there, but still have it come out be very flat. Now the, the two ends are perfectly flat. When you put those together, it's going to be much more difficult to get a nice smooth joint in between the two. Now these are butt joints. You can see that there's a big difference between tapered joints and butt joints. So consequently, our techniques are really going to emphasize the use of as many tapered joints as possible. Installing drywall on the walls, we almost always run the sheet perpendicular to the framing. And then we're going to start with the sheets that run across the top. But first, I want to mark the locations of the studs on the floor and on the drywall on the ceiling so we know where to put our nails and screws. Okay. Well, once we've cut the first wall piece to length, we start some nails along the top about every 16 inches. 